Welcome to this video. My name is Philip Ekberg, and today we'll be talking about record types in C Sharp 9. With almost every new version of C Sharp, people have expected record types to be a part of the set of new language features. However, due to how complex it can be to implement, and with the high standards for the developer experience, the feature has been cut out of all the recent language updates. I've hoped for record types to be a part of C Sharp ever since the first stable version using the new compiler was released. Now, almost six years after that, we're finally getting this added to the amazing language features that C Sharp provides. But you might ask yourself, what is a record type? And how will it change the way that I and you write software? In short, it's a compact and easy way to define a reference type that automatically gets value-based equality, as well as being immutable by default. So let's break that down and first talk about the compact way of defining this record. If you want to run this locally on your machine, in Visual Studio, for instance, remember that you must install and use .NET 5. Now, instead of using the class keyword, we'll say that we are creating a record. This record that we are creating will represent a person that has a name as well as an age. This very much looks like a method. What this syntax does is that it generates a whole bunch of useful code behind the scenes. A lot of these new language features are just compiler magic that generates all the boilerplate code for us. If we inspect the decompiled code, we can see that this generates a class. Hence, we have a reference type. If we scroll further down and look at the functionality that this provides, we can see that the backing field for the name as well as the age properties are both read-only. This means that this reference type is immutable. In other words, we cannot change any of the property values on this particular instance of this class. To get a person with a different name and age, you'd have to create a new instance of the record. So why would you care about immutability? Because in a more concurrent and asynchronous programming world, we can now trust that the objects that are passed between different threads don't change. The other thing that we can see if we scroll down a little bit further is that it introduces an equality check. Let me simplify what happens here. What we see here is a value-based equality check. This means that if we compare two instances of a person with each other, it will compare the name with the name and the age with the age of both these different people. If you compare two normal classes with each other, that don't override the behavior of the equality checks, it would only compare the reference. Obviously, this is a very powerful language feature that allows for less boilerplate code. It's especially handy in larger applications where you have a lot of models or DTOs, which normally contains a lot of repetitive code. Using the record keyword will generate the following different things inside the class behind the scenes. We will get value-based equality. It will override get hash code. We will get a method for copy and cloning the record. We will get a method for printing the members and an override for two string. It will also introduce a deconstruct method, which allows you to deconstruct the record into a tuple thus making it easy to apply this in pattern matching. Records also support for the traditional approach when creating the type. 
We can define properties. In the constructor, we can even introduce method or use inheritance. Consider the following scenario where we want to introduce a subtype for the record person. We could introduce a new record, which we call developer, that will inherit from the person record. This will automatically give it the same capabilities as the person record. We also want to add an extra property to this developer, which is the developer's salary. To spice it up a little bit, let's use a more traditional approach of creating the property on this type. Just like when we create a traditional class, we can introduce a property. We can also create the constructor, which needs to take the required parameters of the base record and pass it on. There is no way of creating an instance without passing all the required parameters, just like a normal class when you have one primary constructor. We also want to take this salary as a parameter to the developer record and set this inside the constructor. This looks very much like a normal reference type, but with the main difference of that it's now automatically generating all the methods and the functionality that we talked about earlier. Taking this approach shows that we could now add methods, fields, and other properties, just like we do with a normal class. This record type that represents a developer also have value-based equality out of the box, just because it's a record. If we try to compare the developer with the person, even if they share the same values, this would fail because they don't share the same type. The value-based equality check will also make sure that you are comparing two types that are equal. The question is, do you think that's a good or a bad approach? Would you rather just compare all the values and ignore the type? I'm sure that ignoring the type would introduce some really annoying bugs for a lot of developers. Now, let's also see what toString generates, because this is an interesting addition to the record type. As we run this, we can see that it prints a beautiful representation of the record type. Now, finally, you're probably wondering how you'd get a new instance with a different value. Since the record is immutable, we cannot simply set the property or the fields to new values. We must use something called the with expression. The syntax is simple. We can say that we want to take the instance of our record, but with a slightly different value. This here would yield in a new record instance with different values, meaning that the original instance still has its unchanged values. This, my friends, is record types in C Sharp 9. If you want to learn more about this, you can read a detailed explanation on the Microsoft Docs. I'd love to hear if this is something that you'd use, so please leave a comment if you think this is a nice addition to the C Sharp language. Is this a language feature that you're going to use and have been longing for? Or do you think C Sharp has enough features? If you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. You can also check out my courses on Pluralsight. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Philip Eckberg, and today we've been talking about record types in C Sharp 9. <laughs>